In this issue of our Profiling Evil Bolo newsletter, I want to focus on a series of abductions that took place in rural Missouri 30 years ago. Trudy Darby, Cheryl Ann Kenny, and Angela Marie Hammond all went missing within a three-month span of time. They were separated by about 70 miles from each other. The cases are so similar that I felt we should explore the possibility that they were each killed by the same predator or predators. I want to thank PE family member Rachel Parker Healy, who submitted this case through the evidence room, and of course our Bolo editor Tim Sessions for all his work. You can catch Tim on his YouTube channel under Tim Sessions. Well, let's begin with the abduction and murder of 42-year-old Trudy Darby of Max Creek, Missouri. On the evening of January 19, 1991, Darby was ending her workday and closing the K&D convenience store. She was concerned about two suspicious men hanging around outside, so she called her son, who jumped in his car and drove to the store to check things out. It only took him a couple of minutes to make the trip, but upon his arrival, he was unable to locate his mother. The business was locked, and her vehicle was still in the parking lot. Two days later, her body was discovered along the banks of the Little uh, Niangua River. An autopsy would show that she had been sexually assaulted and shot twice. Now, 39 days later, at 10 o'clock in the evening on February 27th, 30-year-old Cheryl Ann Kenny closed down the Quality Convenience Store in Nevada, Missouri. She was never seen or heard from again. A worker at a neighboring facility reported hearing a woman screaming in the distance at about the time she disappeared, but thought it was somebody at a bar. 36 days after Kenny's disappearance, 29-year-old Angela Marie Hammond was talking to her fiancé from a telephone booth outside of the food bar and grocery store in Clinton, Missouri. It was just before midnight. She told her fiancé about a man in a green truck that had a white roof on it and a fishing mural painted in the back window. The truck was circling the booth. She stated the driver parked the truck near the booth, and the driver, whom she described as being a filthy bearded man, got out with a flashlight as if he were looking at something. The fiancé reported to police that he heard Hammond scream, and he lost contact with her. He jumped in his vehicle, and he started driving toward her location. As he drove, he passed a two-tone Ford F-150 truck with an outdoor scene mural in the back window, just like she'd described. As he passed, he heard Hammond scream out his name from inside that truck. He turned his vehicle around and pursued the truck for almost a mile before his vehicle broke down. The assailant and Hammond were never seen again. As local police investigated the Darby murder, they received a tip from a friend of a man named Jesse Rush. Rush had reportedly told the friend that he and his half-brother, Marvin Cheney, murdered Darby. He implicated a third individual who wasn't charged for the crime. Well, both Rush and Cheney were convicted of the murder and have remained in custody since then. Cheney died in 2017, but he remained quiet about the homicide until his death. Over the years, evidence has slowly percolated to the surface regarding the two killers, and testimony came forward to suggest Rush told a fellow inmate that he and his brother killed other people. In that communication, Rush allegedly said, quote, the cops don't even know about my brother and me killing any other blankety blanks except Max Creek, close quote. Apparently, he was referencing Darby. It seemed that Rush and his brother, uh, although he's deceased, and perhaps this mysterious third person need to be looked at more closely for the other two murders. Well, my hope is that if you know something, you'll reach out to law enforcement immediately and say something. Go back in your memory banks. Think about this truck, a green truck with a white roof and a fishing uh, 
symbol in the back window. Somebody has to remember who owned that vehicle. The families of Trudy Darby, Cheryl Kenny, and Angela Hammond have now waited 30 plus years for closure in their loved ones' disappearances and murder. Help out. If you see something, say something. Well, thanks for listening, and thanks for subscribing to Profiling Evil in the Bolo newsletter. I hope you'll consider some of our channel memberships where you can be the first to hear about these cases when we release them. You'll also be invited to our monthly members-only chat, and, and you'll get access to other special content. So have a great day.